Can you see me? Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the legendary, the incomparable Mickey Howard. <laughs> hey, Miss Howard! Oh my God! <laughs> What's going on? Listen, I, I am having such a fan moment right now because I was telling uh, everybody before you logged on, if I had the opportunity right now to interview Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, any of those people, and they said, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, or Mickey Howard, who would you choose? And I want you to know I would choose you over any of these new super pop celebrities any day. And here is why. You and your music was just such the soundtrack to my childhood and my teenage years. Like, I can just remember being in the car with my mom, we'd be leaving the mall at eight o'clock and the quiet storm would come on. And it's the next thing I hear, experience is a good teacher. And to be here now, I never thought that I would ever be breathing the same air as you, talking with you, or even having the opportunity to, to meet you. So this is an honor. And I want to thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with us. Well, certainly you have to know that I'm honored. This is so cool. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> and thank you so much. I was so, like she said, uh, um, your uh, person said, oh, we want to talk to you. I'm like, talk to me? Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. I got to, my thing did something. That's wait. all right. We we here, baby. We, we got all night. Uh, uh Wait, wait. Hey, here we go. What'd she say? There's a light that can not shine. She had to go out, y'all. She finna come back home. No shade. Don't Miss Howard look a little bit like uh, Tokyo Tony? Sorry about that. Oh, no, you good, baby girl. You back. So listen, uh, Miss Howard, if, if I may call you that, uh, what would you prefer me call you? Mickey. Mickey, all right. Or Auntie Mickey. Mickey. All right, Auntie Mickey. So I don't know how, if you know how we do it over here, Funky Dineva Live, but we, we like to ask the questions and the real things that people want to know. We I, I, we ain't going to talk about stuff that we can simply find on the internet. We want the real, real. So we're going to start with your biopic, um, which from a fan's perspective was pretty entertaining and pretty good. Did you have any hand in the creation, the production, and the development of that film? Oh, yeah. I had a lot to do with it. We had a good time. Um, uh, yes, I did. In fact, you can see I'm one of the producers uh, on there. Um, I, I helped pick the, the actors and stuff. And the, um, the, the director um, is uh, Christine Swanson, who's really a major, wonderful person and a fantastic talent. And she, she we talked almost every single day for hours. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. So, yes. That that's amazing because so many times we see celebrities out there who complain about their picks because they say they're unauthorized or they didn't call the family, so on and so forth. And so, you know, there's no secret. The the uh, biopic opens up with you having a medical emergency, a drug related medical emergency. And from the viewer's perspective, or at least what I gather from it, um, that, you know, Shaka Khan was your friend and she was your party buddy. Um, and it left me believing that she was the one who introduced you to party drugs. Is that factual, not factual? How does that relationship come about? She's the one that was willing to take the blame. Understood. You know Understood. what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was, you know, we were all doing whatever, you know. And um, I, I, up until that time, had been considered uh almost a religious girl you know you know because i didn't do anything and stuff like that but she was the one willing to take the blame i i spoke to her um when we were doing the movie and uh we talked about you know we had certain incidents and certain we were the closest we were very mm -hmm. close 
So I'm like, you good? She's like, yeah, just, you know, yeah, we'll do, you know, because it's important that um, artists as well as people know that you may have some times like that in your life. And it doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's the end of your life. Mm -hmm. At that time, you know, I thought, you know, oh my God, I'm a drug addict. I'm never going to be a drug addict <laughs> the rest of my life. It's mm -hmm. over. It's over, you know. And I really did think that. Mm -hmm. But had it not been for, an, uh, you know, uh, Oprah show, which he had, in, in, I can never say it. Dr. Vincent. When she would come on and, um, Talk about getting your life together and stuff like that. That that that's why I'm like, really? I can really. This is not. This is just a stage. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. So is it is it safe to say uh, you and Shaka are still good girlfriends to this day? Absolutely. Like um, that's like yeah. That's who 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 else are some of your good singer old school girlfriends that we wouldn't know you still roll and gossip and kiki with on the telephone. Oh my gosh, I have a lot of friends. One of my good friends is Sherelle. She's so funny. I love yeah. Sherelle. Okay. Oh, she's good. Mm -hmm. She's a wonderful friend. She was around uh, uh, saving me when I was getting beat up by the mm -hmm. husband. And I didn't, you know, she would come. He was so scared of her because she was mm -hmm. a little uh, Detroit gangster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so we're still very close. Um, Allison Williams. Um, Just call my name. Come on, Allison. Yes. Oh, uh, it's so many. If I leave somebody out, I'm gonna get beat up. Valia. <laughs> oh, my girlfriend Joy. I love Joy. Oh, it's just it's a lot of, of I love everybody. Everybody. That that is good to know. Um, who is somebody that you met in your career, another artist, um, that maybe wasn't so nice to you? I'll put that, I, you, I, you know, your favorite free, your favorite single. She was not, she was, you know, it's you. I, I just put that to youth and folly and, and nonsense. But yeah, um, Anita Baker was not very kind, but it may have just been a moment. So you guys, uh, I mean, I mean, if you don't mind, do you mind sharing us that interaction? Y'all, y'all had one bad interaction, or y'all had several bad interactions? Oh, it was mostly people. Always okay, people say, in the mix. Yeah, they want to say this or they want to say that, and and uh, I won an award at the Soul Train Music Award, and I've certainly uh, admired her, and I was so excited. And she came to me, she put her hands on my shoulders, and she said, whispered in my ear, uh, um, "You take that and and you." Uh, put it on your shelf and keep it dusted off really good because it's the only one you're gonna get. Ooh. Were y'all in the same category that year or something? People always, you know, we're this we're feminine women uh 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 in the in the same color scheme. So they always mm -hmm. do that. They always do that. They want to make you compare to somebody and make us um uh, you know, enemies. But you know what? That's really disappointing, especially considering the time in which you were really popular because when you look at 2024 and when you look at the 90s, there were a lot of you girls out singing now. And currently, you know, in the R&B landscape, it, there really is no one. Talk to me about your current thoughts on the state of female R&B and soul music. Oh, I uh, travel a lot in America. And I get to see uh, a lot of artists that you don't get to see. Mm -hmm. uh, in Washington, D.C., is the place is flooded with fantastic, wonderful artists that you'll never hear. It's mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's the, the craft that's gone down. I think it's it's the, the people that are not making enough money off of it. So mm -hmm. they only give you like one or two or something like that. Like, I really enjoy... Um, uh, uh, Jasmine Sullivan. Mm -hmm. I think she's so soulful. I, I mean, you know, I'm 63 years old, so I'm mm -hmm. way past her subject matter. Mm -hmm. But you know, but I'm right. I'm crying with her. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember those days and stuff. I think she's fantastic. And I'm, and her and there's so many great artists and Moni Long and stuff. Uh, yes, um, she's yeah. another good one. She is another good one. I I would love to hear, um, you know, one of those girls remake one of your classics and something that always annoyed me with the newer r&b girls I, I think the fans 
and it would be a great way to bridge the gap between the older generation and the younger generation. I would love for a Jasmine Sullivan or for a Money Long to reach back and do a collaboration with a Mickey Howard. You know what I'm saying? Or do a collaboration with a Regina Bell. Or, you know, do you get those opportunities? Do the girls talk to artists like you about things like that? Or is that non-existent? These, uh, I'm going to tell you something, okay? In our trying to get, you know, confident and all that kind of stuff, a lot of the girls are arrogant. And really, yeah. they ain't got no reason to because half of their ass can't sing quiet as skip. Yeah. <laughs> They're kind of arrogant. I've been in the presence of a couple and I said hello and, because I love to fan out. Because mm -hmm. when people do that to me, I think it's so exciting. I'm like, oh my God, you out of me. Uh, you know, so I, I love to say to people, Oh my gosh, I love your music. You do. I mean, they don't know who I am most of the uh -huh. time, and and I've been I've been really treated poorly by them, and I've gone like, "Girl, okay." And you know what? That's why half they ass can't sing right now, yeah, uh, it, it, because they don't know who artists like you are, and and I don't know what happened between the '90s and now. I don't know if it was the shift in radio play that a lot of these younger artists coming up you're absolutely right they have no idea who um people from your generation are and that's why a lot of them sound like trash <laughs> quiet as it's kept my words not yours i love r&b music but i'll be the first person to say that this new stuff that they got out on the radio it just doesn't move me it doesn't i want to say something to that mm -hmm. we have a lot of great artists and they're mostly great on their own. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think Beyonce is the last of the trained artists, literally. I agree. That went to, you know, that was trained. You go to dance class. We had to be able to sing, dance, act, tell a joke, and have a time step. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm saying we, but I'm the last of that kind of generation. Mm -hmm. I went to... I went to Fred Astaire's dance classes. Oh, wow. Dance school. I mean, I was trained. I'm mm -hmm. a trained professional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these girls, or I won't say girls, a lot of the young people are not trained. Mm -hmm. They are just genuinely talented. And mm -hmm. they take that raw talent, and it's and it's what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty cool. But if they kick it up a notch by investing in um, other parts of your talent, they will see, oh, my God, I didn't know I could do this. I mm -hmm. didn't know I could do I mean, we used to write our own songs. Do you, you know... <laughs> These kids have an opportunity to make their own movies, make their own videos, write your own books, do everything you possibly can, you know, to um, expand your gift. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, and if they were smart, they'd realize that it would also give them longevity. Because a lot of these people, I think, you know, just because of the, the Internet, Instagram, Facebook and all these things, you know, they become super popular really quick. But then they burn out because at the end of the day, there is nothing there. You're right. There is no development. There is no training, so on and so forth. Um, speaking of writing your own song, because that's very important, especially when it comes to um, earning potential and, and money that artists make in the future. Did you ever find yourself in any bad record deals? Of course. Of course. I'm still in a bad record deal. There are no good record deals. Uh-huh. It's just, uh, I mean, uh, especially for uh, Black artists, African artists, African-American artists, which is one of the things that propelled um, the uh, uh, hip-hop era to go on their own. And then it, it caused a lot of violence in uh, in the record industry, a lot of violence, because they, they, they were from the streets, a lot of them, and they would say, uh, two plus two is four. I don't care how you say it. I want my four. Uh -huh. And they were and they were going in. And they tried the lawyer thing, and then they were beating up people and shooting and whatever it took. But the rappers got paid, uh -huh. and artists like me are 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 um, gosh, we had had a hard time. You've had a hard time. Um, and if I'm not getting too personal, um, without are are you able to live off of the royalties that have been generated from your past from your past albums and past music? Are you able to just comfortably live off of that? No. No, oh. I still work. Uh -huh. I still work a lot. I I would like to retire, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of maybe the next three, three years. And I really envy the artists that come out and go. You know, I'm retiring, you know, and then they do lots of great big shows. And it's I'm like, that's great. Get your money. I'm not a person that believes in robbing the industry. 
-hmm. but I don't think it's fair for the industry not to uh, pay us, you know, mm -hmm. but they do, this has gone on. It's just not been in uh, music. It's, it's gone on in film and the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And as of late, I've got more royalties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as of late, and I'm, I live a, a meaningful life that mm -hmm. is comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And certainly I love to make more money. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Um, so let's shift gears a little bit because we can't talk about um, Mickey Howard's story without talking about some of her love interests. Would you describe uh, Mr. Gerald Levert as, as one of the loves of your life? Oh, yes. Would you really? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. Uh -huh. He was one of the first men... He was such a young man. I feel weird calling him a man now. He was a boy, <laughs> practically. You know, this was the first uh, male relationships that I ever had outside of my family that um, I felt somebody cared about me, and he cared about me. And you wow. don't know that till all the way to the end. He made a talk a little crap or whatever, but he cared about me. He cared about my children. And when I had um, dark times, like, oh, I wouldn't say they. Other people may call them dark, but they were so fun for me mm -hmm. because, you know, I had gotten off the little drug thing. You mm -hmm. know, you find out you ain't got shit. Ain't nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a little apartment in Jersey City mm -hmm. and I just became an ordinary person. I mattered. You know what I'm saying? As mm -hmm. a person, not as an artist, not as Mickey Howard and all that stuff. And Gerald supported that mm -hmm. because I couldn't even get any work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I went to Russia a couple times. Isn't that awesome? weird, right? Did you know, all, all the places in the mm -hmm. world. Russia, Russia calls, you know, and it and it was just amazing. Just other things happened in my life that took me away, say, from the mainstream or whatever, and I couldn't really be suffering over the fact that oh, I'm not doing this or that. I had a great time, and he facilitated that. Mm -hmm. He helped, you know, pay the bills, whatever. What you need, Mickey? I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Now I'm going to be a little messy right now, Mickey. Was there any overlap in your interactions with Gerald Levert and Candy Burris's interactions with Gerald Levert? Uh uh. Okay. No, okay. I, I, we um we would work after you know we had relationship and all that kind of stuff. We became extremely close because our children became close. We we came from not having kids at all. He didn't have any, and and I didn't have a daughter. You know, mm -hmm. I just had two boys. So we come from all the way, my boys being four years old, all the way till you coming way down the line now, because that's mm -hmm. from 87. And then you start talking about the 90s, okay? Like mm -hmm. mid 90s and late. And no, we work together. Sometimes we do shows and things like mm -hmm. that. And certainly I was a part of the family. Our children never let go of each other. Nice. Today is LaMica's birthday, his son. Uh -huh. Happy birthday, LaMica. You know how she loves you. I always <laughs> love the women he was involved with. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you work together, you got to go. We get the same hotel. We this, mm -hmm. we that. <laughs> it was, um, we were close. Mm -hmm. And 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 you can't all the time just sit out in public and talk. So we'd be with each other's room or oh, what you doing? I'm coming down to your room, mm -hmm. whatever, stuff like that. He was a great guy for to me. And he had um, lots of girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And why not? He was yeah. handsome. And um, well do, to do and a lovely person. Mm -hmm. Good, good to know. Um, you know, these days, social media and reality TV tend to play a large part of people's musical success. Um, would you ever consider doing reality TV? Like, like would you have done a show like R&B Divas had you been approached? I've been um, contacted a few oh. times and I've certainly filmed the uh you know how they do the little whatever it is uh-huh uh-huh with um mona scott and everything i oh, just wow. don't think i'm a good candidate because i'm very like listen um ain't nobody gonna make me do nothing i don't want to do uh -huh. and i'm not gonna sit up and talk about these women with each other i grew up okay with uh -huh. four sisters i had four sisters on, on one side of my family my father and then i had two on my i have six sisters uh -huh. i had they're mostly mm -hmm. gone now and that's another reason why i don't do that to women Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. in general, basically, but I'm not gonna sit up and talk with you and all that kind of stuff. And you're not gonna talk to me crazy all in my face, which they like to try to do. do. I don't yeah. have time for that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh -huh. I have a granddaughter, 19 years old, about to turn 20. Do I look crazy to you? I have four grandchildren. I have three children. I have a son older than you. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. older than you. Mm -hmm. 42 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't do stuff like that. I um, feel crazy. Yeah. But I wanted to be on there because I thought maybe I had something positive mm -hmm. to give. And then and they see that and they go, I'm not a good candidate because you're not mm -hmm. going to do it. It's not going to mm -hmm. happen. Well, you know, hopefully, you know, I, I'll say this: the uh, over at the own network, their reality TV shows tend to be a bit more on the positive side. I mean, listen, you know the business; it's got to be a little bit of mess in order to make things sell. Uh, sell, um, but just from me to you and seeing the personality that you have on social media, I definitely would love to see you in a on a bigger platform in a reality television space. I think that there are so many, um, especially the younger generation, and, and if I could implore you to just reconsider at some point, they need you girls. They really do. They 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 they, they do. I'll, I'll never forget um, Queens with Cocktails was on, and there's a new artist, I don't know if you know her by the name of, of Queen Nyjah, she was on, and Selena Johnson told her, to sing she was like okay you're on a talk show now sing and she just choked up and got so nervous and just didn't know what to do and i remember looking at her like girl you get one 15 minute slot on a talk show and you are a singer and you're gonna blow it and not be able to sing and when me and selena talk offline you know we both came to the conclusion that this is why the younger girls need the tutelage from the more seasoned girls like yourself, so I definitely would, uh, Mickey. If you get they an opportunity, don't listen. they don't listen. Y'all need to beat. Y'all need to beat them up or sit them down to uh, put that good auntie knowledge on them or, or, or something. But they they need they need trust and believe. They need to listen. And it's funny. I'll never forget. I was watching an episode of Video Soul many many years ago with Donnie Simpson, um, and the OJ's were on there. And Donnie Simpson asked Eddie Levert this question. I was a teenager. I'll never forget it. He said to Eddie Levert, what advice would you give the younger people coming up behind you? And Eddie's advice was to study our longevity. He said, I would tell any of the younger artists to study our longevity. And I think that that's what the younger artists need from artists like you who are still around who are still able to sell concert tickets, who are still, there's a demand for your music. The chat right now is blowing up <laughs> with people who wanted to come see this interview with Mickey Howard. So it's definitely much needed. Uh, but I'm not going to take up too much more of your time, Mickey. What do you got going on coming up? Where can we find you? Where can we see you? Are we going to get some new music? Uh, are you going to ever give us another album or has that day come and gone? Okay, one thing at a time. I'm going to be in Atlanta uh, on April 18th and 19th at the City Winery. Mm -hmm. I usually perform at the City Winery, different ones around a lot. Um, look for me wherever, you never know, but mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely going to be there. Um, and do I I would love to make a record. I've, I've been gathering material, but I sure hate to do, you know, they had this thing about songwriters last week. Uh, one of the red, something red, the uh -huh. girl. And she was upset about um, people taking credit percentages. Yeah, that's been going on for many, 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 many moons. And um, it was not necessarily a practice for new artists. Like when I came out with "Come Share My Love," right in 1912, you you can <laughs> <laughs> you can write like you know I didn't have the right to ask for a percentage of the song. No, because I was a brand new artist, and and these wow. are brand new. but. If I had been Aretha Franklin or somebody that was really popping, you know, that's been singing for a long time or doing these records, or Whitney Houston. Right. If she sings your song, you are automatically guaranteed a million seller, basically. It's it's a difference. And they ask for a small percentage is not bad. Mm -hmm. It's not, I never did get to do it, but when they when I got to that level and we talking, I just felt like I didn't need it. It yeah. just wasn't. But in as far as business goes, it's not that unfair. If 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 without this voice, your song ain't selling a million, then you should give a piece of your publishing. You know, it, it's it's so funny because I when I was watching her videos, 
and some of the artists that she called out, I'm like, I, I, my, my school of thought was the same as yours. I'm like, if your song lands in Beyonce's lap and she records it, I mean, girl, you know, 80% of a multi-million seller is better than 0% of a flop. Tell you know me what about I'm saying? It. So my my mind was in the absolute same place. But I, I but but there is an argument to be made to um when I guess some people feel that they're being greedy. Um I I I don't know. I think it's greedy when you keep selling stuff you don't know nothing about. If you're selling your music, doing your music or whatever, and maybe you do some art or whatever. But when you start selling toenail polish and shit, it ain't going to be your <laughs> Don't you have enough? Aren't you making enough? From the- it's ridiculous. I think that part is crazy. And, um, you know, percentages are relative right. to what you get, what you negotiate. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, Elvis Presley and his manager split 50-50. Ain't no bigger artist. Uh, uh, um, what's his name? Um, Satchmo, him and his manager did 50 50. If a manager comes now and say 50 50 with an artist, they're like, Hell no, no, absolutely not. Who do okay? Mm-hmm. When you find out the work that goes into really managing an artist properly, you made me think that. Where'd you go? You gone? I'm still here. I was just giving you the full screen so people can get a full understanding of what it is you were saying. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's negotiable. It's, it's what are you going to do and what you need. You know, what you need is more important because if you don't get what you need, you're not going to get where you're trying to go. You, go. you, you know, it, it's true. I mean, and, and, and there's an argument to be made because, listen, um, I, I guess what probably bothers a lot of people probably is the power dynamic aspect of it, right? Because if you walk into a studio and Beyonce's people, and I don't want to make this about Beyonce, any big artist, any big artist, and they say, you know, we want 20%. Are you really going to say no? You know what I'm saying? You, you, I'm, you, if it, I, look, if I can, if I can write a song and Beyonce want twenty percent, she can have it. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. Mickey Howard, this has been amazing. This is been amazing. I was like, so this excited. is excited. You know, I love you guys. I love all of y'all. I really do. I'm a the, podcast junkie. We love you more. And now, listen. I, 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 I know some singers don't like this. Could you give us two bars of something? Maybe I'm in love under new management. Child, I can't have we sing that song when it's time to sing. <laughs> I don't feel that. <laughs> you, you got to give us a bar or something before we get off the line. Something. Oh, oh, wait, wait. I'm trying to turn. Let me see. Take your time. Oh, and she played the piano, y'all. Whoa. Nah, it ain't that. It ain't baby. working today, baby. It She's ain't working. Ba- Whoa. <laughs> Listen. Oh, oh. I've been up and I've been down. I have I my feet. Off the ground. <laughs> hey, every ladies and gentlemen, Mickey Howard. Mickey, thank you so much for this. I love you. And listen, baby, anytime you got anything you need to promote, anything you need to get out there, my platform is definitely yours. And I look forward to us, A, meeting in person and us sitting down and doing this again. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Fuck it, not even. Thank you. You have a good night, my love. Good night, darling. Yeah, bye-bye. <sighs> Y'all, that was so much fun. God, thank you for blessing me with the way that I earn a living, being able to do the things that I do, meet people that I never thought I'd meet, have fun, earn a living doing it. I recognize and I do not take for granted that what I do for a living and how I get to move, most people do not. And for that, Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. 
Y'all don't know what this interview just did for me. This is one of the second greatest moments um, in my career. The first would be when I did Candy's play, A Mother's Love, and I got to share a stage, y'all, with Shirley Murdoch and Eddie Levert. Legends. And then now I just had a 30-minute conversation with Mickey Howard and the fact that she knew who I was and was enthusiastic to be here. There was SZA did an interview where SZA said she's already won XYZ amount of Grammys that really there's nothing more for her to do. They were asking her, you know, where else are you trying to go in your career or what's next? And she really was like, I mean, you know, I'm content. Um, and I understand that feeling so much. What just happened right now I don't need no damn Emmy. I don't need no daytime talk show award like that. That shit don't mean nothing to me. I just got through having a conversation with the legendary Mickey Howard, y'all. And as much as I knew who she was, she knew who I was. I'm going to cry when I get off this thing, but I'm not going to upset my makeup and disturb my tears.